Hey, welcome to the podcast. I am Joel, and I'm here with my dad. And I'm Rick. What's dad, up? Dad, we did an episode uh, called Concerned About My Kids. Yeah. And you should be, by the way. Yeah, and that uh, <laughs> that episode was very popular. So we thought we'd follow up with more stuff about parenting. Okay. Because as we talked about in that last episode, in many ways, learning to be a good parent is really about your own spiritual growth. Yeah. And a lot of the parenting challenges we face are really our own personal challenges. I, I've said that about marriage. Yeah. Like, there's really no marriage problems if we get down to it. It's people with problems that bring them into marriage. Yeah. yeah. And our own hangups, our own maybe bad experience of a parent, we bring to our parenting and we go, oh, I vowed to never be like dad and I'm being yeah. like dad. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. I, I want to talk about just a couple of little Here's a weird observation, all right? So I want to specifically talk today about beating your kids. Okay, let's beat our kids. <laughs> now that's a little clickbait, all right? When I'm saying beat your kids, I'm like, I'm talking about how much should you let your kids win? Uh -huh. And how much should you teach them to be a good, I hate to say loser, but yeah. my daughter, she's at the stage right now where she does not like to lose so much to the point that she's learning how to cheat at games like Catan, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I get on her. I'm like, you're cheating. No, 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 no. <laughs> but she always wins. She's figured out how to manipulate. She's too smart is the problem. She's figured out how to manipulate games where she always wins. I'm trying to teach her, like, you've got to learn how to lose well, too. But she does not like losing. Yeah. But I've also seen parents who go to the other extreme. Uh -huh. And they never let their kid win at anything. And they're like, I'm teaching them character. There's got to be a healthy balance in there of teaching your kids, like, like you got to learn, they're going to get beat sometimes. And I don't yeah. mean beat like spanking. Yeah. Uh, again, that was a little defeated, clickbait. Yes. Defeated. Defeated. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you teach your kids to lose well and win well? And should, at a younger age, should you be just letting them win all the time so they get the experience of victory? Some would, some would, I've heard many yeah. parenting theories. Some say, let them win all the time because they'll get beat up by the world enough. But then others go, but other parents are like, well, I'm just teaching you, preparing you for when you get slapped around by the world. So yeah. where is it? I don't know. The way you said that just reminded me of that song by uh, Johnny Cash where he says, I'm a boy named Sue. You know, my dad named me Sue, so I'd grow up tough and grow up mean. And he goes out and tries to kill his dad to get revenge for it. And then his son, dad says, I, I made you that way because you needed to be tough. And at the end, he says, if uh, when I have a child, I'm going to name him Bob or Bill, anything but Sue. You know, so the point is it didn't work. You well, naming your kid Sue isn't that big of a deal anymore if it's a boy anyway. Well, I suppose that's In today's true. world, who knows what your boy is going to be named, but okay. anyway. <laughs> old, old song. Okay, there's my age showing through. Um, I would tend to be more with the, you know, of course, the answer is it doesn't matter what we think, right? What does Scripture say? What is, and I always go back to, so how does God treat us? You know, does God let us win all the time, or does he whoop us down, beat us down sometimes just because we need to be tough and learn? And I was trying to think of a biblical example, and I, I thought of a few of them, you know, and it's like, um, well, you like to wrestle, at least likes to wrestle with you, right? Oh, man, that's okay. never ending. We could, if it were up to her, we'd be wrestling every day. That's yeah. And I let her win. I yeah. usually let her win. Well, that's good, because God let Jacob win. Now, he did break his hip. <laughs> so don't, I don't recommend following God's example all the way, but... But he let Jacob win, right? I mean, he, he wrestled with him all night, all night long. Jesus, you know, the, the God or the angel or whatever it was, it was probably a theophany, appearance of Jesus, appearance of God yeah. in the flesh earlier. Um, he could have just, okay, I'm done. I'm not gonna wrestle all night with you. You know, I'm, I'll give it 15 minutes or whatever. But, I mean, so that we, we learn more through our defeats usually than our victories. But there are gonna be plenty of defeats. Yeah, there will be plenty of defeats. And the thing is, your kid needs some place he can go when he is beat up by the world and flattened by the world and put down. Some place he can go that he knows they're going to say, "Hey, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I've got your back." Right, and then, and feel encouraged. I mean, yeah. Nassim Taleb he talks about the three kinds of systems that are in the world. He talks about the fragile systems that break when they're exposed to stress, and then he yeah. says there's a robust system that nothing happens. It's just you know like a big old rock. Mm -hmm. But then he says fragile is not the opposite of robust because a fragile thing breaks and crumbles apart. Robust is unmoved. And he comes up with this word called an anti-fragile system where yeah. an anti-fragile system is something that basically gains through some stress, some disorder, some challenges, some resistance. And he basically says humans. And we are anti-fragile. We are anti-fragile. And, and he mm -hmm. says the crazy thing is if you treat an anti-fragile system like it's fragile, it becomes fragile. You know, mm -hmm. Jonathan Haidt in his book, The Coddling of the American Mind, he says that's the problem in America today. Right. We've buffered our kids from any uh, any negative 
feelings. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. hear these negative things. And he says, we've made them weak because they're actually anti-fragile systems. We're not invincible, but I mean, Nietzsche, a guy we don't quote much in the church, but he says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, basically. There's some truth to that. Paul said it, we rejoice in our suffering for we know that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, yeah. character produces hope, hope doesn't put us to shame. So there's this, this sense that in, through, in Acts, it says, through much suffering, we enter the kingdom of God. It's through our defeats that we tend to grow and depend more on the Lord. So you've also got to teach your kid to, to accept defeat sometimes. But I don't think we need to be the one defeating them, particularly when we're playing with them, you know, because again, they're going to experience plenty of defeat. I mean, they're, they're humans. Yeah, I mean, so let's talk about that, like setting, setting goals that are higher than what your kid's ever going to attain just to go, well, at least they're aiming higher. Like, again, I think the parent, where else are they going to go to find encouragement, acceptance, you know, when, especially if you're not doing it when they're little, when they get to be teens, they're going to be looking for acceptance somewhere. Right. And whoever gives them, aff- yeah, whoever gives them the affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and where uh, the place where they go that they know they can be accepted no matter how stupid they've been, no matter what they've done. I remember I asked you guys one time, all three of you asked, you know, I was trying to prepare a series to help other parents. And so I, I asked you, what did we do right as parenting? Can you tell me? Because I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. I can num- name 20 things we did wrong. What did we do right? And Kara said this. She said, I always felt like I could come to you guys and share anything with you and you wouldn't freak out. And she says, maybe on the inside you were freaking out, but you went outside. I agree with that. I remember several occasions of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then she gave the example. She said, like, my friends would come to me and they would be talking about a problem they have. And I would say, have you talked to your mom and dad about it? And they go, oh, no. <laughs> I, my, my mom would kill me if I told her that. And she said, I was just so glad that I could come and talk to you about those things. And there were some things she, she shared that, yeah, inside I'm kind of, even I'm kind of freaking out. You know, I'm pretty mellow, you know. You, um, but for some reason we didn't on the outside. And again, kids need someplace they can go that when they fall flat on their face or do something really stupid, somebody they can go to that's not a peer, Somebody they can go to who's going to say, you know, I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. I'm with you. I'm, I got you. I'm on your side. I remember you telling me that many times. I was like, oh, it's the, the mistake that will never be rectified. And you're like, yeah, eh, it's not the end of the world, Joel. It's going to be okay. And I, I, I was, I mean, we've talked about this before. You always went after rebellion. Like if you sensed any rebellion, yeah. like I was doing something directly rebellious, you'd go after that. But in general, if it was just a kid mistake or Childish a teenager mistake, yeah. I knew you were a safe place for that. And uh, I mean, that's a, that's a huge part of it is that's true. And you, I don't feel like you ever set me up for failure, but I see a lot of parents that in some ways they set their kids up for failure and they say it's, they, they're, they see it as building, you know, this resistance in them, but they set these impossible standards yeah. when God does. I mean, we go back to this verse over and over again, but he remembers our frame. He knows our frame. He remembers that we're just dust or, yeah. and God doesn't have unrealistic expectations of us, but yet at the same time he says, be holy. So there's this goal we're shooting for, Yeah. but he also is a safe place to land when you don't meet the, the, yeah. the, the goal. And so, but, okay, here's, here's, a, here's the uh, other side of it. I do feel like sometimes God sets us up for divine failure to teach us something. So where is our role as parents in that of like making things setting up like she's probably not going to reach this goal like i know there's certain things with elise but to set the goal any lower would be to probably encourage her to become less than what she can be and so it's you know allowing her to experience defeat within the realm of some parameters of i'm going to be there to lift her up when she experiences it what's your take on that well i mean it's kind of some like um if you're there to gra- if you're there to pick them up, I, I don't know this. The phrase came to my mind from the uh, Rich Mullen song where it says, "If I stand, let me stand on the promise. Mm-hmm. But if I fall, let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you." Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna fall, and there will be times that happens. And God does set a, He sets an impossible standard for us, and that be holy as I am holy. Yeah. And yet then He accomplished it. He became the holiness we become his holiness by affinity with him so it's actually learning to walk in his grace when we fall short yeah which yeah. i guess is the greatest job of a parent is yes. we don't set them up for defeat but we're there to show them what gracious yeah walking well, in victory in spite of defeat looks and like we just or, and we do set, we do set an impossible goal for them too i would like for you to you know here's what we want you to be i want you to be a i, I want you to be perfect all the time i want you to be good all the time knowing that that's not going to happen. 
because it's not going to happen with us. I mean, so we do, we don't just set low standards, you know, well, gee, if you get up and make it to school, you may have been late and you, you may be half dressed and you may not be prepared, but I'm proud of you because you, you know, you don't set low goals. You set high goals, but let them know that, hey, miss it or make it, you're mine and I love you and we're going to get better tomorrow. Does that make sense? If you didn't have that growing up, that's a foreign concept though. I, I talked to a lot of guys who are like, my dad was in the military and he, I mean, you're, yeah. your stepdad was there, or your, yeah, your, your adopted dad was in the military, but there's this idea of, well, that's how you build discipline is, and you know, as a, a, a drill sergeant, it's just like, just constantly beating you down. They're like, we're going to humble you and beat you yeah. down. So where does teaching your kid humility, how does that fit in where, where it's? Well, some of that goes back to, okay, that's the way your dad was. Fine, cry about it. Now let's get up and move on. <laughs> and you be better. Be the same and be thing. better. It doesn't mean yeah. you did it right. Yeah. No. And, and you, what about you those that would it, say, well, it worked for me? Yeah. Well, I turned out okay. You know, well, maybe. <laughs> you still sound bitter about it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> and the other thing is, it's like, okay, you know, uh, shall we? Those who say, well, I went through public school and I turned out okay. It's not a matter of did you make it? Did you survive? Did you live? Are you okay? What could you have been if your schooling had been put in scripture and the word of God into you and what could you have been? And so it's the same way. And okay, so you survived, but what could you have been? And, and don't be going back and beating on your dad. He did the best he could probably. So now you do the best you can and you're more enlightened as we all are. We're all smarter than our dad, right? <laughs> so, you would hope. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and the dad would hope so too. Hopefully I've given you a head start and you go further than I ever was able to. But the point is that y- Okay, put that all behind you. The past is the past. Look forward. You're not going backwards. So now be the person that you, you feel like your dad should have been. You can do it. You, can, you don't have to be defined by your past because you're a new person. You're born again. Your past is in Christ. I mean, I know that all gets real ethereal and spiritual, but really you can be a different person. You can change. You can be what God's called you to be, to be what he's called you to do. So how much pressure, that anti-fragility idea, like if we make it too easy on them, they're not going to grow. How much pressure should we put them uh, on them as parents? Because we are, and that's part of our job is to teach them kind of how to operate in real life. So there there can't just be a, I'm going to be the wonderful, loving, compassionate, you know, always, you've never done anything wrong, kiddo. But you've got to also, in some ways, you've got to push them to a level where they're going to experience some defeat and I mean, even in just the simple example of wrestling with Elise, sometimes like, should I stop? Perfect le- example. Should I yeah. stop letting her win? Sometimes, I mean, meekness is strength under control, right? It's not weakness. Meekness, and we're called blessed are the meek, for they shall yeah. inherit the earth. Uh, the meek meekness is basically saying, man, I could crush you with my strength, but I'm going to choose to let you win just because I can, and that's the true sign of strength. Yeah, but one side is you're letting her win because you're just limping out, and there it is. The other side is, okay, you're going to have to work for this. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you will I do. Eventually, win, but you're I mean, gonna have to work for it. I pin her down to the point where she's about to give up, and then I'm like, she's about to give up. It's time to back off. Exactly. Yeah, and and I think that's a key to it. You know, because that's where Scripture says, um, it talks about don't. In fact, twice it tells fathers. It says, don't exasperate your children. That's right. I remember that verse. Twice. Yeah. It's in, yeah. it's in Colossians and in Ephesians, and both times it says, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't exasperate your children. And it's funny that he never said that to mothers <laughs> and he never said parents. It seems to be a problem we fathers have is we have a tendency. And I think some of it's like playing with them, you know, and pushing them a little far. And I don't know that's something I did sometimes. Provoking was, your yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah. You're kind of messing with them a little bit, you know, and some kids love that and they, they banter with you and go back and forth and other kids just get provoked. And I, I had to learn, I still learn that sometimes with kids, you know, it's like, oh, this kid doesn't take well to that. I have yeah. to treat him differently. I can't provoke him. I can't push him, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a guy thing. It is a guy thing. How do we, we how do guys share love and camaraderie with one another? We provoke one another. We Make punch each other each in the other. shoulder. We yeah. laugh at each other. We call each other names. We provoke one another. And so we have a tendency to do that with kids and it works well with some kids. Some kids they know you love them because you're messing with them, you know? Some kids don't take that well. Yeah. And so that's where, if you're provoking, if you're, if you're always beating them to the point of frustration, 
And this one says, don't irritate, don't frustrate. The, and Amplified gives a lot of words on that. If you're doing that all the time, then eventually what's going to happen, I don't even want to play with dad. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to be around dad. He's just, you know, and probably with good reason, if you're that insecure that as a 35 or 40 year old, you need to beat an eight year old. Come on, grow up, dude. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. And, and that's where it really comes down to, which I feel like that's everything we ever close this the topic with is, first of all, humble yourself a little bit. And then second of all, well, humble yourself a lot. Yeah. And then second of all, you've got to listen to the Holy Spirit and pay attention yeah. because each kid's going to be different. You're yeah. going to have one kid that can take the bantering and joking and they're like, love that with dad. But you got another kid that that's going to literally crush their spirit. Yeah. And you have to pay attention. And every kid's so different. You can't afford to not pay attention and listen to the Holy Spirit for each child yeah. and how they need to respond. And some kids, you got to push them. They're going to be a little more naturally path of least resistance. And you're going to have to, to, you know, give them yeah. a little bit more chance to experience victory because they're going to be more prone to give up. And then others, you're going to like, well, I can, I can push them really beyond what they think because they're, they're pretty resilient as it is. But yeah. that, that takes really paying attention and listening to the Holy Spirit. Scripture says to know the condition of your flock and you dare not treat every kid equally because uh, out of the idea of fairness, because God's not fair, but he is just and you need to treat them the way they need and deserve. Thanks for listening. Please consider sharing this with your friends on the platform of your choice. For more from Joel Malm, visit joelmalm.com. For more from Rick Malm, visit rickmalm.com. Our podcast music was produced by Alex Burleson.